so good. <laughs> Oh yeah. Mm. Good evening and welcome to it. This is Chess and Wine. Chess and Wine. My name is AD Pila and we're live today at the Fishmonger in Nell Street. Obviously, I'm getting dined and I'm just stepping on a bit of wine, just trying to make sure that everything is still in order. I hope the music is not too loud because there's a bit of music playing in the private room where they had me seated. Whew. So I could have this um uh, live streaming with the international master Johannes Mabuza to make up for the push for the mistake of yesterday because that was so poor so bad and we're trying by all means to ensure that this second round streaming is excellent right but anyways before we get to it let me just give you a quick update on the results of the first round in the south african closed the south african closed chess championship is well underway for the next 11 days or so this is going to be one day or two skip but yes just for about that long and who what a beautiful event it's going to be and it's so impressive it's so interesting it's a whole lot happening and what's so sad you see me <laughs> i'm shy away from things that are making people's hearts ache because I guess what's making mine ache is the fact that this play is South Africa's top cream de la cream. The ones we favor the most, the ones that bring us the medals from outside, the ones that we are preparing to send to represent us in another country are playing for a position and the rights to represent only no prizes. And what's stressful about it is that I'm certain that there are some costs to the players. I am hopeful that they did not go directly to the players but to the regions that they are representing. I'm hoping that no player has had to cover anything for transport, for accommodation, for food. Hey, chess is one sport that is unfavored and unprioritized and, and, and it's so sad, it's so crazy because I'm now thinking even Sascock couldn't do anything just to offer a bit of prizes. Just a bit of money, just something to say, hey, first place winner, like, couldn't even the federations that are being represented there just say, okay, okay, we'll all put out a thousand rands, no, per player, or something, right? And then we'll have, like, prizes, especially for the open section, the ladies section, maybe even the, the senior section. My God. So I don't know, but anyway, that's how it is. That's what it is. Because obviously, chess South Africa is in a bit of shamble. Because obviously, it hasn't been fully given over to the new administration that's been elected. So they don't have money to run things. They don't have money, and it's amazing how they managed to do so much. I mean, fine. It's not like we shouldn't we, we we shouldn't criticize them, but we shouldn't always be praising them. But obviously, if you're looking at the facts, you see that oh, under Hendricks have iron iron hammer or something they've been able to do a lot like it's a whole lot that have been they've been able to do and we should be applauding that effort but I want no they've been actually in fact they've been keeping things running so that's applauded but again there are some challenges and the fact that there's no money there's the region but the regions that are working with them should be helping with money and I'm also wondering about the ratings of the events because now I've got my uh, my, 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 my my license from uh, the new Excel executive and yet I'm told that my events cannot be what uh, be, be, be rated. What's happening? Does this mean now that these people that are rating events or even the SA Open are paying Henrik? Are people that have been that are paid to Henrik and we were asked not to pay to Henrik? And now that we can't pay to Henrik, we can't have our events rated. But some people can have their events rated. Anyways, that's me digressing. Let's look at the results now for the um, the event. They're currently going the first round of the event, the first round of the tournament. The ladies section, because we're already in the ladies section and we've seen it. It's amazing. Um, the 1726 rated Grobela Jacko playing a draw against the 1909 rated Women International Master Charlize Van Zayn. I hope you saw the interview with, with, with Charlize Van Zayn on Chess and Wine. Just take a look at it. Maybe get to know the lady a little bit. Right? The internet, the, the, the feeders um, PR manager. Ah, marketing and PR, come on, get to know a little bit of her, please, go watch the interview. So now, it was actually an amazing performance by Jack because me looking at the ratings and thinking Charlie's very sure, I'm thinking, ah, it's a straight up win, but hey, nobody's here by a fluke. Everybody that's been selected to be in this event is here for some reason. And on the next board, it was uh, um, Helen, Christian, Helen uh, Rotten, Rottenbach, Helen Rottenbach losing to Hayley Nell, that poor, hey, that game was so crazy. 
I saw a night fog that was meant to be happening at some point in this game. I saw it was just so much happening. But Haley was on to her from the start. Yo, the rating difference speaks volumes here, but it's just a mere 90 or something rating difference. But hey, hey, this performance, ooh, my good, my god, someone to look out for. Like, let's see what she what she does. Nell Haley, I remember her from the Moja game okay, next to Vaganza where uh, Cosmopolitan Cosmo chip, the Cosmo chip for Africa chess, for Africa news or something wrote about her that ah. Uh, Nelly or Haley speaks English, but she was playing the English from that. So it was just something like that. And so I still remember from that. Hey, Haley. And yes, and then we have um in the next board Nikki. We must start losing Nikki for Jesse February. The women international master who just came back from winning the African Chess Confederation ladies section is now here winning the first game that people were saying it's a game to look out for, to look at. And the player to look at. <laughs> Chloe Buttonhouse, the women feeder master. These tycos are here, my goodness. So, yeah, so Chloe Buttonhouse loses to Jesse February, but again, she's a very strong player. I think last year, did she win it or did she come close to winning it last year? Something like that. Maybe she wasn't the prize in the top three. Yeah, something like that. She's a very a strong player as well and one to look out for. And a rating can just, just tells you not a lot of ladies are rated 1900 in South Africa, so she's rated 1917. So yeah, uh, winning or uh, losing against Jesse Everly was rated just three points above her. So you expect, hey, you're expecting a tight game. But that happened and it happened and we see it and we uh, applaud the woman grandmaster elect for keeping proof for proving that, hey, I'm the queen. <laughs> okay, and the next board it was um, Women International Master Anzel Lobsher uh, playing against um, a draw with Dave, uh, with Davida Strong. And we're still, yeah, we're still yet to see if Davida is strong. Maybe a family consider her strong because they are strong in their own way, but we want to see if she's strong in this event. Davida Strong can prove yourself. Because apparently you're Bojanalian, and Bojanalians are, are, are known to be strong in some way. Why am I even mentioning Bojanal? That's a federation anyway. So, yes. So, um, Women Internationals and Zola Lobshire also coming back from the two events back to back with um, Women for the International Master Jesse February and Vanilla Mango as well. Like three, I mean, these people have represented. They played the African Games and then when they went on to play the African Chess, um, African Individual Championships, and now they are here playing the African Closed for no prize money. For no prize. But anyway, say chess, my goodness. It's like we're still trying to keep it afloat in our, in our own efforts, in our own sweats, blood. But yeah, the next board we see Chisomo Bosham weaning again. That's the pawn storm that I was talking about. The pawns that were flooding the king's side like crazy. Whew. That game was interesting to watch. So that was um, uh, Kia Ch Chisomo Bosham flooding or bringing the storm to Jim Imkita Joy, who's rated 15, 1658. So again, Chisomo is probably another person to look out for. She also comes from the African um, uh, Individual Championships, but didn't fare very well there. We didn't see her in the top five, but we're hoping that here at least she represents a region. Shows some good performances. The next board it is uh, Bia Fanze losing to Robin Julian Classen. Another lady that's been at the top for a while, but then now I think she hasn't been right there in there. So again, we'll see how things go as we are watching. Round two will be starting very soon. Now let's go to the senior section and then see. Let's just before we go to the open section, which is obviously the section that everybody wants to hear about. And some it's, it's, it's obviously the attracting the section, not to say anything about the other sections but we know <laughs> the main section is the open section because everybody is allowed to play there regardless of age regardless of gender it's open to everyone right <clears throat> so yeah in the senior section in the first board we see justin walking wait are the results not updated did i just skip to wait 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 because i remember oh yeah something said round two no i'm in round one sorry i'm trying to see round one there we go so yes, <laughs> so yeah, in round one of the uh, of the open say of the of the senior section, we see a draw between Glenn Wollenberg and Fidel Master Baudin Shaviu. But it's so crazy because yo no, because I mean I've, I've been looking at the performances of um, the with the Wollenbergs, and the only Wollenbergs that I was seeing at the top was um, Craig and Kenny. And now I see that in the senior section, at least if you can draw with Baudin Fidel Master Baudin, you must be a strong player. 
your veteran, I believe that. That's maybe that's why. So yeah, another Willenbeck drawing against Andre Schultz. That is Roland Willenbeck drawing against Andre Schultz in the next board. And the next board we see Cyril Danisa losing or oh, winning, in fact, winning against uh, Andrew Sude. Andrew Sude, we see them in the B section of the Cape Town Masters Challenge. See? That's players. And there's another player, Metcalf Alistair, who won against Ohio Cecil. And I believe there is a South African closed. And I don't understand why is there no South African flag showing next to the name Alistair Metcalf. Somebody must explain this. If it's a South African closed and you're showing a FIDE flag instead of a South African flag for this player, what are you saying? Is this player South African or not South African? Come on. South African closed, everybody must have a South African flag. Yeah. Yeah. On the next board, the reigning champion of the senior section, the player, Mr. The player that won it last year, has just lost to Stefan Gallet. Stefan Gallet takes it, wins against Sir Mark Lewis, the Triple M guy, Mr. Triple M, Mr. Mark Lewis. Also, again, there's an interview with him here on Chess and One. You can go check it out. So go to the playlist interviews. I'm sure it's somewhere there you'll find it and you'll get to know him too. But obviously, we're speaking about the Cape Town League. That is the biggest league happening in South Africa every year with over 700 players taking part in it. And in the next board, we see uh, Candy Master Lyndon Bauer playing a draw against uh, Justin Wilkin. My God. Anyway, so that's what's been happening in the senior section. Now we go quickly to the open section where we're expecting a whole lot of fireworks. Fireworks! I mean, there was a whole lot of fireworks that we expected here. And, but, I mean, some of the players were seemingly um, players that have played one another before played each other before but yeah anyways we look at the first time me noticing or really we were watching a game between Peter Master Michael Simpson and Peter Master Calvin class and I was we oh, were waiting, we're watching with bated breath, or whatever, waiting with bated breath, or whatever the saying goes, however it goes. But that's what's happening, that's what happened. Uh, Peter Master, Calvin Klassen won it, and in the next board, there was a draw against Miasto Schalten and <laughs> International Master Jan Kasten. Wow. Wow. So they played a draw. Anyways, that's so good for them. Still good for the boys, still good for the players. We like because they're both strong, they've played one another a couple of times before a number of times and then the next board again is another draw between Mguni Jacob and Keith Kumalo both representing kind of master in fact Keith Kumalo both representing Twane Chess again they come from one place so they had to draw and in the next board <laughs> maybe I'm thinking um, I'm, 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 it's, I'm, it's not right that I'm laughing that Fidel Master Manila Mango lost to Fidel Master Daniel Barish because he was wearing glasses why why was he hiding his eyes why did he lose the game? It's so crazy. Okay, maybe that's why he lost. It just, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm honest. I've honestly been wondering why he's wearing, he's, he's wearing glasses. Yeah, we saw a whole lot of exchanges. At first, Manila went, uh, what, an exchange down. And then Barish gave him back the exchange just so he could have a passed pawn. And then Manila gave back the exchange to be behind again in material to see the game go. Hey, and then it just went south. And now the game was lost. I don't know if he took out the glasses or he was like, oh, good thing I'm losing with glasses on. You can't see my eyes. You can't see how I feel. <laughs> what else? Say? Anyway, sorry to Manila Mango. We were going to blame it on the fatigue. Or maybe we could for you because you're playing in this section. But I mean, again, blame it on the fatigue for you and everybody else that's been playing with you in that event are here and kicking. No, they haven't kicked anything yet. So it's just um, uh, uh, Jessie that won. And um, I'm sure she's also struggling or suffering a bit of fatigue. But you, we don't know. We'll see from round two that is happening today. And in the next board, Luton Fazwe loses to the young and upcoming 13 year old. Caleb Leverton, Fidel Master Caleb Leverton, also coming from the African Individual Chess Championships from representing. Oh, Luto, what? I mean, I was also hoping to see what, what, what type of fight would Luto put up. But hey, that happened. And the next board, it was International Master Watu Kobese against International Master Daniel Koji. They've been playing together for years, probably know each other. But it seemed like Hodri came guns blaze, guns blazing, trying to just get it over with and get the I am out the way. But hey, Watu, Watu held his own and the game ended in a draw. 
And that's it from this event. Stay tuned. Honestly, we'll be trying to give you to keep you updated. So now, since we are, oh, anyway, let me let me not even talk about that because that's probably going to come up a bit later. Because I'm also probably going to post it a bit after we've already done the um, um, what do we call this? The post game analysis and obviously um, uh, commentating and analyzing the games as they go as well with international master Wa um, uh, Johannes Mabusela. He's on his way. He's coming. So right now, I'm just going to enjoy my time at. Um, the fishmonger in Nelspreet while I'm waiting for him and now I'm drinking my Simon Sek bottle. Sold by the glass. You can tell that this wine glass is not mine, right? I don't own it. <laughs> That's how this TV playing behind me. But that's what's happening. Good evening and thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe so you can also be part of the live stream as we do it. Good night. <laughs>